and enjoy yourselves on the world-famous studio tour. The Universal Studios Hollywood is converting the world-famous studio tour trams to become electric vehicles. As these trams roll out, guests will be experiencing all of the movie-making action propelled by the latest energy-efficient technology. Now, this is just one example of NBC Universal's and Comcast commitment to becoming carbon neutral by 2035, helping us all take another step toward reducing our carbon footprint. So, welcome aboard for an awesome experience that's also awesome for the environment. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome aboard the world famous studio tour here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Are we excited to be here today, everybody? Yeah, I know it's about time, right? Well, we made it. We're here. We're going to have a good time. We got to make sure of a couple things. First off, we all need a pair of 3D glasses. So it's your last chance. Thanks, Paul. It's your last chance to get a pair of these bad boys, a pair of these 3D glasses. If you do not have a pair, put your hands in the air right now. It's your last chance to get a pair of these bad boys. Uh, I'm Joey. How you doing? It's a pleasure to be your tour guide. In a few moments, we're going to say peace out of this theme park. We're going to make our way down to the working production studio here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Bob, right? My man Bob, how are you? Hey, let's all say hi to our driver, Bob. Everybody say hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. We're lucky to have Bob with us. Without him, we're walking 400 acres, all right? So remember that. We're not standing up on this store, all right? We're staying seated. I'll make you walk. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, you guys, we ready to have fun? Yeah. Yeah? All right, well, we just got the clear. We got the go-ahead, so that means we're going to make our way down. We got to wave goodbye to everybody out there on the load line, and as we are getting going here, I'm going to hand it on over to my co-host. He is the star of the Tonight Show. His name is Jimmy Fallon. 
Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. Okay, yeah, what did you do about Spanish tour? How did that? We're going to resume our endless tour. Thanks for doing Joey. Bob. They're the best. I love them. Even though Joey owes me five bucks. Oh, man. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Is what it is, Bob. What are you going to do? First off, if you need guest assistance, you got a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or have any sound or video issues, reach up, grab the ready cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use a red cord above your head if you need any assistance. The studio is private property, and if at any time during the tour you drop your phone, you just can't wait to use a restroom. It's all good. Pull that cord, remain seated. I'll be back to assist you shortly thereafter. And please, no smoking of any kind during the tour. Don't be that guy on my tour. I don't think so. And be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. You want to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep your eyes on them so they do not get wet. And finally, for your safety and for those around you, please, no selfie sticks while we're on board again. How you doing? I'm Joey. It's a pleasure to be a tour guy. We're making our way down our universal timeline right about now where we are about to be surrounded by a handful of the eight to nine thousand films that have been filmed here at universal studios hollywood now our founder carl lindley opened up the gates back on march 15th in 1915 we had our very own sheriff station medical station we had our very own fire station we had 150 acres now we got over 400 we used to have one zip code now we got multiple the only difference between our Universal City and your city where y'all live is that ours is designated for filming purposes. That's what makes everything so exciting out here at Universal. Matter of fact, in a moment, we're going to pass by Fire Station 51 on our right-hand side. I'm always waving hello as we drive by. My way of saying thank you for keeping us safe here at Universal Studios Hollywood, just like my man Bobby is keeping us safe on our tour today. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> Good. How you guys doing so far? Good? Yeah, good. Hey, we should all be feeling fantastic. Not every day we get to make our way into the working production studio here at Universal Studios Hollywood. So let's do it. I'm going to show you on your screens right, right about now how we use a sound stage. All right, a sound stage is basically an empty warehouse where production folks are able to build sets inside and regulate sound and temperature on the inside. Typically, we're filming interior shots. Now, uh, that being said, we're going to pass by in a moment our first sound stage at a sound stage 12. It's our oldest, it's our largest sound stage. That'll be up ahead on our left hand side. And as you'll see when we pass by, the, the voice is painted on the front side of it because we film television series like The Voice, The Kelly Clarkson Show, The American Song Contest featuring Sne uh, Snoop P O Double G. We also got Quantum Leap, our reboot series. We also have. Hacks, which is on HBO Max, produced by Universal Television. They're in season two. Uh, season three filming right now, actually. And as we make our way out of our Universal timeline, you guys, you might have noticed around Soundstage 12 that there's a lot of construction going on. That's because we are in such a high demand for movie making and television making out here in sunny Los Angeles. So we're expanding in our front lot and in our back lots by building more sound stages so we can film more. But we're also expanding in the theme park, y'all, in less than a month and a half, or just about a month and a half, we're gonna have Super Nintendo World. So check out our social media accounts and our website for more information on the world they're creating about fellow Italians, Mario and Luigi. You know Joey will be there, how you doing? All right, check it out. We're passing by to our left-hand side. Sound stage is 11 down to 7, where they're actively filming, like today, actively filming season 2 of Bel Air, which is the dramatic reboot slash retelling of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So for my folks out there that recall, down in West Philadelphia, I was born and raised. On the playground was where I spent most of my days. And if you love the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I guarantee it, you're going to love Bel Air starring Jabari Banks on our Peacock streaming platform. It's fantastic. And if you're a fan, we got a treat for you. Take a look to your left hand side. That's the base camp for Bel Air. So what does that mean, Joe? Well, that is where our actors hide out in their trailers while they are waiting to be called the set. And as somebody who likes to pay credit where it's due, like I do to my man Bob, keeping us safe, I like to pay credit to the hair team, the makeup team, the wardrobe team, the new COVID protocol team. 
the, uh, the the craft services team, anybody who helps make the world go round on the production set, because it takes everybody to work hard together, all right? Now, in a moment, we're going to pass by some sound stages on our right-hand side that are designated for television filming purposes. So actually, what just wrapped up their fourth and final season was Never Have I Ever, which is on Netflix, produced by Universal Television. Uh, it is also produced by Mindy Kaling, who brought us the Mindy Project. She's also Kelly Kapoor in The Office, of course. Now, it stars my trainee, Ramakrishnan, and a dear friend of mine, Alexandra Billings, plays the counselor in Never Have I Ever. Uh, and Alex always gets a shout-out on the Joey tour because we're dear pals, and we share the same manager. How about it? But we've got a treat for you. Coming up ahead to our left-hand side, we got Ted the Stuffed Teddy Bear. He is so excited to tell you guys that he has just wrapped up filming season one of his prequel series to the Ted films. We're gonna find out how Ted became Ted on our Peacock streaming platform. I'm very hyped about it. I hope you guys are as well. Matter of fact, Ted right there marks the start of our production bungalow. So all the office buildings that you're gonna see on your left-hand side are designated for folks involved in production. Now we got three parts to production. We got pre-production where we're writing the script, we're budgeting and we are casting. We got production where we're building the sets and we're filming. And then we got post-production where we are editing the films uh, or projects and bringing them to fruition so we can see them on the big screen, either at home or in the theaters. And some examples of production companies we got for y'all today. We got from the Bay Area, we got Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Seven Bucks Productions. It brought us Young Rock. They are currently on location filming season three of Young Rock in Tennessee. We got Amy Pascal's Pascal Pictures. It brought us Spider-Man No Way Home. We got Mark Platt's Mark Platt Productions. It brought us La La Land, Dear Evan Hansen. And they're currently producing Wicked Part 1 and Part 2. I'm very hyped about that as a musical theater nerd. I hope y'all are as well. And coming up ahead, we're passing by Production Bungalow 5195 with a friendly silhouette. Alfred Hitchcock brought us films like Vertigo, The Birds, and Psycho. This comes off. This should be a driver. I'm mean, really very excited. Just to know that he was there and walked by and know he was in that office. Hitchcock has been moving every direction. I saw Hitchcock boy smoking around the commissary. Hitchcock, I'm from the law. I used to go see Alfred Hitchcock. I love working with him. I highly respect him. He really understood fear. Now, as you'll see to your left-hand side, these buildings look a little more modern, and they are sound stages, and they do look more modern because they are quite literally some of our newest sound stages that have been constructed. Now, they were first utilized back in 2016 for Hairspray Live on NBC Live, where they actually dressed the inside of these sound stages to our left-hand side as the family room for Tracy Turnblad, the lead character. And in live time, they left the doors up this soundstage to our left-hand side, went down the street to our right-hand side, down our New York Street, where it was dressed as Baltimore, for the opening number, Good morning, Baltimore. It's as simple as that, you guys. That's how we utilize filming here, filming in sound stages and in our back lot. So we're saying peace to the front lot, and we are now in our back lot, specifically a special four-acre section in the back lot designated to being titled the Metropolitan Sets. As you can see, we're able to turn any of these streets into any big old metropolis city. Take a look at Brownstone Street right here. You might notice it from Bruce Almighty in 2003 featuring Jim Carrey or a young Macaulay Culkin throwing bricks off the rooftop in a Home Alone 2 lost in New York. You might also recall where we are pulling into right now because we are pulling into where Marty McFly was flying to and back to the future, everybody. That's right, this is the Clock Tower, a.k.a. our Courthouse Square. It is called our Courthouse Square because it was first utilized as the courthouse in To Kill a Mockingbird, based off Harper Lee's novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, that starred Gregory Peck. And also recently we've used this area, Rutherford, for, uh, Rutherford Falls, starring Ed Helms of The Office and Janice Meeting. There in front of us is a tram full of guests staring at us. Hello! <laughs> Hi, Studio Tour. Wow, this is so cool. Do you know what else I'm excited for? Tell me. I'm thrilled to be in this legendary spot known as Courthouse Square. 
It may not look like much now, but for our show, Rutherford Falls, an incredible team of artists, designers, and builders transformed it into a fictional community where our awesome characters live. That's right. Our production team brought in street lamps, props, window dressings, painted the sidewalks, and put up decorations to trick your eye into thinking this town is real, when in fact, it is fake. That's right, everybody. We got the ability here at Universal, specifically in our Metro sets, to trick your eyes into believing that this town is real, when in actuality, we are lying to your faces. It ain't. It's fake. All these buildings we are surrounded by are just a bunch of facades, and facade is French for false front, a.k.a. structure, a.k.a. we are only utilizing these buildings for their exterior facade purposes, okay? Let's go back to Hairspray Live, you guys, in live time. Again, we had those sound stages where we had it dressed as the family room for Tracy Turnblad. Right out of those sound stages where that tram is passing right now. They left, and they made their way on New York Street, where our tram is right now for Good Morning Baltimore. Here he is, Jimmy, on New York. Hey, everyone. Welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. Once well, got mugged over there. An old woman, a tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. I should have known, Jimmy. Uh, you know, but as we pull up the road here to return to Skull Island, take a look back to your left-hand side down New York Street and imagine the obstacle course to American Ninja Warrior because that is right where it is set up. That is right where folks and contestants make magic happen. Now, here he is, Peter Jackson. King Kong. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct the movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. And I wanted to become a filmmaker. Yeah. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the future. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island. It was great to have you on the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience. So you All right, everybody, let's throw those 3D glasses on. That's right, 3D glasses on. And hold on to your personal belongings, because we're back on Skull Island. it up for King Kong 363 D.
continue to pay credit where it's due. That is the Peter Jackson and his Weta Effects team, formerly Weta Digital Effects. They brought us films like The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings trilogy, Avatar, some of the dragons and Game of Thrones. It says on your screens that they've won five Academy Awards. However, so far, Weta Effects has actually won a total of six Academy Awards. Also, one of the things about this live, unlike the movies that we're used to working on, is no cuts. Because it's one giant shot, and it's slammed, it's driving all along this how I am, this is where the camera is from. This one represents the, where the screen is spinning over the way. Now, when our tram got yanked into Skull Island by that knucklehead of a T-Rex, it became a shining star known as a picture car, you guys. Now, picture car is any plane, train, boat, tram, automobile using a motion picture, hence the term picture car. Get those cameras active. We want to pick up our actors doing their thing, not the camera crew. We got the Cry Daddy from Jordan Peele's Us. We got a tank looking thing from Transformers. It's actually called the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle, made of 70% plywood and a really solid paint job because folks in production got to have the ability to blow things up and then rebuild. We'll give you another example of that in a moment. Welcome to Jurassic Park. That's right, everybody. Welcome to Jurassic Park. All the set pieces, props, and picture cars that we're about to be surrounded by are all from the original Jurassic Park trilogy. First film came out in 1993, the second in 1997, and the third in 2001. And the mobile lab unit to our left hand side is also mainly wood and a really solid paint job. And as we pull up here, all I gotta say is, don't say I didn't warn you about those dinosaurs, because I know I did. Studios Hollywood is rainfall, right? Ironic that it's been raining like crazy the last few days. But you know what? Uh, rainfall is actually beneficial to filmmaking because it's something that could be utilized as a tool to help raise the stakes for our actors in their current given circumstances for their characters. You know I me? Mean? So that being said, we're gonna show you guys how we make it rain out here in sunny Los Angeles using the scientific method called the sprinkler system. I'll say it again. Sprinkler system. Okay? Pay attention closely. It's pretty sweet. Water shoots out the sky. It's the grab. But pay closer attention to the strobe lighting effects going on in the background that our lighting design team would implement during the filming process. And then the sound of the thunder that our post-production editors would add in post when we're filming here we want to pick up the authenticity of the sound of the rain and our actors speaking through the sound of the rain Since 1968, we've been recycling the same water that goes back up to the top of the hill, comes down for the next trail. 
I'm just playing around. I'm just a jumpster up here. But no, actually, that is what happens. It comes back up to the top of the hill. It's got to come down for the next round, right? We'll give you another example as we, we continue through old Mexico. See this water fountain to our left hand side? That was using a film where Jack Black was singing to Encarnacion. That's right, everybody. Nacho Libre was filmed right there in old Mexico. But now we're saying adios to old Mexico so we can say howdy, partner. We're making our way to the wild, wild west, specifically here in our six points west of the city, everybody. Now, we film films like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, star Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio right here. We also filmed our Angeline Peacock series. Now, Angeline's famous for making herself famous in the 80s by putting her face and her name on a bunch of billboards throughout this town. But folks, I want you to take a closer look to your left and to your right. As you'll notice, some of the doors and windows are bigger than others, and some of them are smaller than others. Now, as we pull out at six points here, I want you to continue to take a look at the difference in size of those buildings. Now, why do we do that, folks? We use an illusion called forced perspective. I'll showcase that for you right now. Well, see here, if I'm a cowboy, they're going to place me in front of one of them tiny doors, one of them tiny windows. Make myself appear bigger, more burly, more like a cowboy, you know what I'm saying? But if I'm a damsel in distress, they're gonna place me in front of one of the tall doors, one of the tall windows, make myself appear smaller, more vulnerable, more like a damsel in distress. And that's how we utilize force perspective, everybody. But now take a look to your left-hand side, because that's our Park Lake. Park Lake is better known as home to the Gill Man, AKA the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> I just want to quickly say that we're halfway through the tour, everybody. Appreciate y'all for staying seated. Friendly reminder to pull that cord if you need my attention. Now, back in 1929, in our Park Lake, we also filmed the musical Showboat. Now, Showboat features the song Old Man River. It was directed by a man by the name of James Whale, who was notorious for having brought us a lot of our universal monsters, who got their famous start right here in Little Europe, everybody. So welcome to Little Europe. We're talking monsters like Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula. And look to your left, everybody. You don't want to miss them. Look to your left, the Invisible Man. Ah, I'm just playing. We also recently have filmed The Good Place out here in Little Europe. Check it out. You and Eleanor Shellstrom are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Okay. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Do you know what else is awesome, you guys, besides watching The Good Place? Is entering a legitimate soundstage. So here we go. We're going to take y'all in the soundstage 50. Not every day we get to do this because they're filming in here all the time. Let me show you what we have done in the past. Here's an episode of Bones using soundstage 50. Oh, I talked to him, so they got in his arms. That's with the FBI? FBI, yeah. We hear about the uh, human remains. That's him. Right over there. You alright? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Now, folks from the Bay Area, welcome home. We are here at the BART station in San Francisco. Uh, I am from San Francisco, so I'm very happy to have you guys here at the BART station, one of our only two-story sound stages, so it's pretty sweet. Oh, it's
Ovation for everybody. Oh, the Survivors, the Earthquake, the big one. A simulated 8.3 Earthquake on the Richter scale. What does that say about the soda fun? Being from the Bay Area, I gotta tell you, earthquakes are no fun at all. They're just simply not a good time. But you know what? A good time is going to the beach. You guys like going to the beach? Yeah, good. We're taking y'all down to Amity Island, home to Jaws the shark himself. And I know you're probably a little afeard at the moment, but there's nothing to be afeard about. Take a look. Bob and I got a buddy, George. He's in the water right now. He's a scuba diver. His job title is actually jo uh, Shark Wrangler Scuba Diver. So he actually just wrangled that shark that's hanging right now. And it looks like we got to cheer him on right now. There's another shark in the water, you guys. We got to cheer him on. Here we go. We got we to gotta cheer on George. Let's go, George. Come on, bud. Uh, we tried to convince him to stick to the jungle, but he is now George of the Sea, everybody. If you'd like to be a scuba diver, you come on down and talk to Joey after the tour. We got a job position available. All right, we're going to hide out behind this highly flammable dock right now. working actor here at Universal Studios Hollywood. I'd like us all on the count of three. We're going to turn around. We're going to wave. We're going to say hello, Bruce. All right, ready? Don't think. Just do one, two, three. Hello, Bruce. Well done. You're cast. You're hired. Well, I got a cool story for you. That quote, hello, Bruce, it's from Finding Nemo. And the great white shark from Finding Nemo, Bruce, was named after our great white shark from Jaws, who was named after our director Steven Spielberg's lawyer, Bruce, who was named after... I'm kidding, it stops right there. But Bruce, the mechanical shark, he sent to the bottom of the ocean on day one of filming. They needed a total of three Bruces to get through filming. The whole production was pushed back six months, became known as Flaws. And thanks to Flaws being pushed back till June 75, it became the world's very first ever summer blockbuster. So we owe a lot to Bruce and the Amity Island. But did you know that Amity was also doubled as Cabin Cove in Murder, She Wrote? Check it out on your screen. Now take a look to your left. You see that yellow house with the green rooftop down our Elm Street? That was Boo Radley's house in To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, all right. I gotta go there, you guys, because it's the second time I brought up To Kill a Mockingbird. If you read Spark Notes or you didn't read the book, you watched the movie instead, pick up the play, read the play. It's a great read, I, I just gotta say. And take a look to your right, that's our chicken ranch, aka the best little whorehouse in Texas. But you guys, for the first time, I kid you not, Bob, what, in a couple months? We're taking y'all down to Colonial Street. Welcome, everybody. Literally first time in a couple months. Uh, we are making our way down a bunch of practical sets, so that is what makes our Colonial Street so special, so important. Because what a practical set is, is it is a set where we are able to utilize it equally for its interior and exterior purposes, okay? Now, that being said, why would we film here? Well, we have the ability to burn homes down like we did in the pilot episode, aka first episode of Desperate Housewives. That's right, this is Wisteria Lane from Desperate Housewives, everybody. 
If you take a look to your left right now, you'll see a gorgeous view past this tree. Don't mind that chunk of metal. Uh, but where that chunk of metal lies is right where that house was that was burned down in that original uh, pilot episode of Desperate Housewives. So that's something we could do here. We couldn't do in your neighborhood. We couldn't do that in my neighborhood. We'd have to pull permits to do that. And even if we were able to pull permits, they're not going to let us burn a house down, right? We're able to crash vehicles into homes. We're able to fly helicopters here, fly planes here. Bless you. We are able to have barbecue scenes like in Superstore here. We got Davy's house from Never Have I Ever here. We got Flash Gordon's house to our left hand side. This blue house from the Ted films, all right? Uh, and I'll show you on your screen how else we have used Colonial Street. We are 15 minutes from the end of the tour. We'll be returning to the theme park shortly. Final friendly reminder to stay seated. To pull that e-cord if you need my attention. Check it out. This is what happens when somebody stands on my tour. I don't think so. Yeah, it's what I thought. <laughs> I'm just playing around. No, but really, thank you guys for being awesome and staying seated. Appreciate you. We are making our way up our wilderness road here. We have used it as the wilderness in Bird Box on Netflix featuring Sandra Bullock. We used it in an episode of 911 Lone Star. And here we go, round in the corner to one of the longest still standing sets in all of Hollywood. Everybody, welcome to the Bates Motel. Um, it's from the film Psycho, but I wouldn't be nervous if you, if, if I were you guys. Actually, if it's okay with you, Bob, kind of got to use the restroom, so we'll make a little pit stop right here. All right, thanks. All right, you guys, sorry about that. Just gonna have to take a couple seconds. Oh, uh, hang on, that's, uh, that's Norman. I think I might, uh, stay in here. He gets weird every time we drive by, and he's here. <laughs> Mamma mia. Okay, well, you know, psychopaths are like uh, dinosaurs. They can't see us. They can't hear us if we don't move. Don't make a sound. So nobody move. Nobody make a sound, all right? And we're going to be just fine. And you can blame uh, Joey for that one. Um, um, yeah, Bob, we got to get out of here, Bob. Oh, my goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry we were calling that was close. Let's all say bye, Norman. Peace. I'll see you later, alligator. Now take a look up ahead here as we continue making our way up the psycho path. I, I'm sorry, up the path. We're driving by the original psycho house right now. You can see Mother in her upstairs bedroom window. But now, welcome to the crash site for War of the Worlds, directed by Steven Spielberg, production design by Rick Carter, and you best believe it, that is a real Boeing 747 airplane we are surrounded by. Um, a set that is all designed around the vision of Steven. When you first began to sit down to talk about the War of the Worlds, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Thank you. That's me. That's me. Now listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Now I'm closed. <laughs> Bobby, get in. Get in. Well, everybody, this crash site was only used for three minutes in the film, and it goes to show you the amount of effort that goes forth in the Hollywood filmmaking and the building sets here at Universal. So, I'm going to hand it on over to Academy Award winning director Jordan Peele to welcome you all and to introduce you all to Jupiter's Claim from his film, Nope.
movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Plane, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Jupiter Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Sheriff. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this amazing Guys, we've driven through some incredible film sets, so we're going to put you all in a film. You are each individually your own witness to a federal crime, and thanks to you and whatever crime that is, we got to go into hiding. So we got a message from this dude. His name is Roman Pierce. So here he is. He's got a message for you all. He's got something to say. I'm the one holding the gun. 
They have a line a whole lot bigger than yours. Um, let's go this now, this now. Let's go, Cookie Puss. That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just having a nervous time. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Shaw traced us. I just can't hold forever. Letty, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Trying to move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. Police is all warmed up right next door. Welcome, welcome to I need you and Lenny ready to go. Uh, respect for me, the driver's name is Bob, not driver. It is Bob pulls us forward. I'm gonna ask y'all to put those three D glasses on. It's time. Right, and you are all now officially part of the Joey crew. Thank you so much for having a good time with me out here at Universal. You guys have a good time on the Joey tour. Yeah, it's always good vibes on the Joey tour, everybody. Let's give it up for my man Bob who held things down. He kept us safe. Everybody say thank you, Bob. Yeah. We appreciate you more than you realize, Bob. And on behalf of Bob, on behalf of myself, Joey, on behalf of Universal Studios Hollywood, thank you so much for joining us here at the World Famous Studio Tour. Where we're celebrating over 100 years of movie making. You want to become a pass holder, come back again, take that tour again with your boy, Joey. Go ahead and check out that digital directory when you exit the tram. Don't forget to check out our... Uh, digital app where you can check out wait times for rides, show times, confirm park hours. Other than that, you guys, thank you for joining us here at the entertainment capital of LA, Universal Studios, Hollywood. Watch your step off the tram. Uh, don't forget your personal belongings. Don't forget to recycle those 3D glasses. Don't forget your children. And don't forget to have a fantastic rest of your day, all right? Peace, you guys. Happy New Year.